Uh, tonight we're going to be introducing uh, our new guest for the evening, and I'm excited. Uh, he's a visual artist specializing in experimental videography and amateur art films. Uh, he's a writer, fanzine publisher. Uh, he used to do a cool zine called Slamming Dandruff back in the day, in the 80s and stuff. Uh, he, he's been in a part of bands like, uh, oh my gosh, Gigi Allen and the San Antonio Slime Buckets, uh, The Vacant, The Holy. Uh, he was in a band called V-O-M-I-T. <laughs> Uh, the Garbage People. He's currently, though, right now he's in a band uh, that he spearheads called Sockeye Steelhead. And they've got a group on Facebook, too, that I've recently joined. Very interesting person who's based in Dallas, Texas. And gosh, the last time I saw him was when we played there in like 2006. Give it up and welcome to the Church of Rock, Mr. Gene Perfect. What's up, bro? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's a pleasure, man. Um, how long have you and I known each other? Since 86 or 87. Yeah, wow, time flies, bro. Uh, so, uh, we, we became pen pals, uh, you know, a year or two after the, the Hate of the Nation tour, GD's Hate of the Nation tour. And you did a fanzine. You did, like, the ultimate GD zine. Uh, I can't remember. What was it? Was it called Hated? Yeah, it was ha- uh, Hated in the Nation, Volume 1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, that was when we became pen pals. Wow. So long ago, dude. And, you know... Thirty-something years, well, at least, right? You know, hard to believe we're still alive. (laughs) You know, I was thinking that the other day. Whenever people find me on the internet and they haven't talked to me in a long time, they'll be like, "Wow, you're still alive!" I get that so much. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I'm sure, because me and you both live similar lifestyles. And uh, let's say, folks, we were a little little rough around the edges back in the day, huh, Gene? (laughs) Oh yeah. Um, what some people might not know, just to interject real quickly, uh, is that you actually went from Dallas, Texas, to my home in Peoria, East Peoria, Illinois, back in 1990. Was it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was about this time, uh, about this time that year, is uh, early August. And to uh, play guitar with the Scabs, and that was when Chance Rush was in the band. Hey, Chance, shout out to you, man. You know, he just hit me up a bit ago, and he told me to tell you hello as well, man. Cool, man. Had a great time. Yeah, we had, uh, uh, what people... I, I was, there was a lot of drinking going on, but <laughs> from what I remember, it was a good time. Well, what happened was, folks, real quickly, Gene had come from Dallas. We were going to start a new version of Bloody Mess and the Scabs with Chance Rush and Gene, and we had Ty Smith on drums, who played the drums on the Sixth Grade Field Trip album. Well, we got together finally for our first original, our first you know rehearsal. We get all ready to rock. We're all ready to get this band formed, take pictures, and, and, and Ty decides he can't make the practice as our drummer because Married with Children was on, and he refused to not watch it. Wow. <laughs> remember that? But I, I do remember the song of Voodoo Doll. Yeah. I, I, can, I can hear it vividly right now. Did you ever record that? <laughs> yeah, Voodoo Doll is on my uh, second 7-inch, the one called Empty, that's like the B-side. Awesome. Yeah, and that actually features my brother Steve. Uh, my blood brother Steve plays second bass along with Ugly Ted. But, um, you know, about you. Um, yeah. How did you first get into punk rock? How did you first get introduced to the whole underground scene and all that, Gene? Uh, pretty much grew up on rock and roll. Uh, you know, hand-me-downs from my mom's record collection and stuff. Uh, she had a friend who was uh, a few years younger than her, a few years older than me. This is in 79. I was 12, and I was you know already a big rock fan. And, um, well, I was starting to get into the new wave. Uh, when I saw Devo on Saturday Night Live, that kind of that was kind of a game changer, but the, the real game changer was when um, uh, this guy loaned uh, loaned me the Sex Pistols album, and I heard that, and you know the rest was history. I just uh, that was I fell in love with punk rock, and you know uh, did, then I got into a band in '84. Uh, was in a couple of bands in the '80s. What was your first band? It was called The Holy. Wow. It was horror punk. Uh, we we're, were kind of a Misfits influenced uh, thrash, uh, more thrash, not, not as melodic as the Misfits. And uh, the drummer was uh, uh, Lyle Blackburn, Count Lyle, who was also the guitar player for, for Gigi's band when we played with Gigi in 85. 
So that, yeah, that's to skip ahead just a little bit. So all of a sudden, it's uh, 1985. You're now a, a part of the band that Gigi was infamously played, The Twilight Room in Dallas, after his stop in Peoria on the Hated in the Nation tour. How did that come about? Were you and Gigi friends for a while before you were, uh, you know, joined that incarnation of the band? Gigi and I became pen pals in late 83. Okay. Uh, I was doing a fans. I, I sort of was doing a fanzine called Slamming Dandruff, and I had only done uh, three three or four issues and um, uh, I guess it was September or October of 83 I was uh, at the record store in Dallas and um, I saw I'd never heard of Gigi and I saw that uh, Gigi Allen uh, Gigi Allen the Scum Fucks uh, the one with uh, the five song EP that was later issued as side one of uh, EMF so uh, I just saw it I was like well this looks really cool you know Three bucks can't go wrong, and uh, so then I wrote to Blood Records, PO Box Fifty Four, Hookset, New Hampshire, 03106. Still got that address emblazoned in my brain somehow. That's weird because he uh, wrote, wrote back, and we became pen pals, and and then we exchanged a few letters, and uh, so I interviewed him for Slamming Dandruff, and uh, then you know around eighty four, around the middle of eighty four, he said. Uh, that he was going to be touring by himself, and if I knew any anybody that could back him up, and I had never mentioned to him before that I was in a band because that was secondary to you know I was a fan of his, and so I said, well, I'm, I'm in a band, you know, we can we can do it. Let me ask these guys. <laughs> awesome. And that's how Count, Count Lyle was uh, the drummer for that when when you did the Dallas Twilight Room thing. He was originally supposed to be the drummer, Gigi. Uh, was saying that he was going to be touring with Cheetah Chrome, and uh, I, I kind of, I kind of suspected he, he could have been either pulling my leg, or, or maybe it wasn't going to happen. So I was a little skeptical, but I was pretty excited about it. And you know, then when he showed up, he you know, said Cheetah couldn't make it. So um, originally, it was going to be Lyle on drums because he was the drummer for the Holy, and then but he was also a guitar player and. Uh, so we kind of rearranged things, and we got the drummer from from the vacant, uh, my other band, uh, David, who uh, to play drums. Ah, so that was, and then and then uh, we came up with the the name that everybody regrets. <laughs> yeah, and do me a favor. I, I hate to uh, sound like I'm flogging a dead horse, but try not to cuss on me because we have FCC rules and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Um, I was going to tell you that album or that show that you performed at in Dallas, boy, that sure that sure turned out to be a legendary event, man. Like there was a vinyl record of it. There's like cassette tape. I just found my original cassette tape with the original cover yesterday. I didn't think I even had that anymore. But uh, it, that was a legendary show. A lot of people really talk about that a lot. It's crazy, man. Yeah, we had no idea it was going to blow up and become you know as big as it was. Uh, I mean, we were excited to do it because I was a big GG fan. Um, but, you know, we had no idea that, I mean, I had no idea I'd even still be alive 35 years ago. <laughs> Let's, uh, you know, be talking about it and, you know, people still talking about it. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, and GG always maintained that that was one of his favorite uh, live recordings, too, which is a huge honor. Oh, big time. Hey, dude. Um, and you also played with him. Uh, just because he's got like millions and millions of views on all over the internet, I thought it's worthy of talking about this stuff because a lot of people like this history. How did you end up, um, how many years was it before you joined uh, Gigi and the Slime Buckets for the San Antonio gig? Was that like two or three years later, or how many years were, was that? Uh, a little under four years. It was, it was a little bit less than four years later. Uh, Gigi had just moved to Chicago, and uh, we were talking on the phone. We, we stayed in touch you know, all those years. We were in touch from 83 to 91, and then unfortunately, uh, we kind of, uh, our friendship kind of dissipated, but, uh, so in 89, uh, he personally invited me, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be going down to San Antonio and playing with these guys that aren't even going to be playing any of my songs, they're just going to get up there and make a bunch of noise, and uh, you want to join us, and I said, sure, so uh, that was... That was the San Antonio Slime Buckets. <laughs> wow, man. So uh, did, 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 how long did that set last at that show? Uh, only about maybe 15 or 20 minutes ah. at most. It was all kind of a blur. It was it was really chaotic. It was a, a whole different vibe from um, from Dallas 95. And Dallas 95 was kind of fun. And 
you know, uh, Gigi had a sense of humor, obviously, if you ever heard the recordings. And, and you know, you know, but uh, I'm sure a few people know, but not everybody knows that uh, Gigi had gotten a lot darker and more serious yep. and more, you know, way more intense and self-destructive. So it was a whole different vibe. It was, it was kind of scary, but it was, uh, it was incredibly intense. Yeah, you're right about that, man, because the 85 GG when we first met him, because I, too, started writing him in 83, so you and I have very, very similar parallels, and he didn't even have, I don't think, any tattoos when I first met him, maybe one or two. Uh, he still had all of his teeth. Uh, he was, you know, had long hair, and then a couple years later, for this, you know, hated in the nation, too, he had the dog collar, teeth missing, he had a lot more tats, he, the, the humor was still there, but not like it was before, and then, flash forward to the early 90s, he's even less us like uh, like he used to be and like you said it was very intense man to watch him progress uh into what he became yeah it was um it was it was uh, he was a trip you know he was definitely on a on a self-destructive path yeah and, uh, well concerned. you know well, you know, Gene, the stuff he did with Punk Media, though, was pretty cool, because at the very end, he got to do all that cool country stuff, which really validated his career a lot, because it showed a different side to him that he was capable of, and some of those songs are really good, so cheers to Mark Robinson, he'll be on the show next week from Punk Media. Oh, excellent. Yeah, man. Um, what are you doing now? You got Sockeye Steelhead, I see you all over the net, you're doing all these cool little videos and songs, which are always fun and intriguing. Uh, what's up with uh, Sockeye Steelhead? Do you guys will you be doing any live things? Is it just strictly a visual thing, or what's up with your future for this band? Uh, the Sockeye Steelhead group is uh, it's a solo project. That's at first it was just called Sockeye Steelhead, and then I because because it was a solo project because it's a solo project I started calling it the Sockeye Steelhead group. Um, it's just pretty much uh, experimental weirdness. Um, I did this project uh, in the late eighties called the Disease. And uh, it's kind of picking up where that left off, just um, abstract uh, noise rock, or some of it's not even rock, it's kind of experimental music. And then I've got a side project with a friend of mine, uh, Captain Cowboy Keith Cannabis, uh, called The Garbage People. And uh, but that's that's kind of a part-time thing, is we don't really get together very often. So, uh, Sockeye Steelhead Group, uh, I don't know, I want to... I wanna, do a live show um it's just kind of up in the air right now because i got so much other stuff going on my personal life is kind of a mess right now and so um unfortunately i haven't had very much time to dedicate to creativity as, as i'd like to um because i got some other stuff going on but yeah uh, it's kind of up in the air you know I, um, it's kind of just a, a solo project something i do for therapy and if anyone else likes it that's great you know it, um I love getting stuff out there, and I think there are people who are, uh, you know, weird enough to uh, appreciate uh, its, its abstractness. Oh, yeah. Your stuff is always cool, dude. So, Sockeye Steelhead Facebook group, if anyone's interested. Uh, I remember having um, so that, that Rock Hudson's disease thing you used to put out. I had some VHS tapes and some cassettes, and I always loved all the stuff you did, man. Just always on the cutting edge and definitely different than everyone else, which is a good thing. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, too, by the way, as you know. And, uh, yeah, my stuff is really um, kind of nonlinear and abstract. Well, the garbage people is more uh, straightforward, kind of a country, sleazy country blues kind of thing. But uh, Sockeye Steelhead stuff I do is um, kind of picking up where the disease left off, and then it's just very um, kind of a, a Dada art version of, of uh, punk rock. I don't, I don't know what to call it, you know just kind of weird um just whatever i feel like doing some of it's guitar oriented some of it's some of it's kind of rocking some of it's kind of um you know industrial or whatever you want to call it kind of uh electronics just all just different weird stuff well, I dig it a lot, man, and I really appreciate you uh, making the time because I know initially you were a little hesitant, but I'm like, come on, man, you've you've been around for all these years, and people want to know about you, and they, lots of people over the years have asked me, hey, where's Jen Steiger, where's Gene, and I'm glad that you're still around, bro, I know you're doing uh, pretty well, despite, you know, like you say, having, you know, some life issues, you're doing good, you know, we're still breathing and creating, and uh, I'm, I think our paths are going to cross more than uh, once more in our lives, and uh, it's great to have you on the show, man. Thanks for having me on, man. And uh, it's, it's definitely been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I was uh, I was a little hesitant because I'm kind of low key and kind of uh, 
kind of a private person now, but uh, it's, it's really built me up, and I appreciate you building me up and having me on the show. It's been great. Of course, brother. Um, you want to introduce the song we're going to play? It's the Sockeye Steelhead uh, show theme. Yeah, the Sockeye Steelhead show theme. Uh, they are also known as the Sockeye, Sockeye, Sockeye Steel, the Sockeye Steelhead <laughs> show theme. Uh, it's uh, kind of conceptual. I, I did this recording. It's uh, a little bit cleaner, a little bit better sound quality than most of the stuff I do. I do all my recordings on, on two cell phones. Uh, so it's all over the air. It's all sounds kind of tinny and no bottom in, real low, lo-fi, uh, lower than lo-fi. So this one I did on an app, and it's um, when I played it back, I thought it, it sounds like it could be the theme for a for a show or something. somehow it's mm. from that. Yeah. So uh, so this is the Sockeye Steelhead show theme intro. And I love what you said, lower than low fi. I love that, lower than low fi. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good title. Well, dude, thanks so much for your time. We'll keep in touch, man. And we're going to play your tunes now. And uh, thanks for your time, brother. And long may you prosper. I appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Gene Perfect from Dallas, Texas. We're going to do this Sockeye Steelhead uh, show theme. Here you go. God, what a tongue twister. <laughs> Gene Perfect rocks, man, at the Church of Rock and KSKQ Radio.